reading for the day it comes from the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk chapter 3, Habakkuk chapter 3, from verse 1 to 19. Habakkuk chapter 3, from verse 1 to 19. Children, are we there? Are we there? Okay, then I'll, I'll begin reading. A prayer of Habakkuk the prophet on Shigionoth. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, O Lord. Renew them, renew them in our day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Teman, the Holy One from Mount Paran. His Glory covered the heavens, and his praise filled the earth. His splendor was like the sunrise, rays flashed from his hand, where his power was hidden. Plague went before him, pestilence followed his steps. He stood and shook the earth. He looked and made the nations tremble. The, an the ancient mountains crumbled, and the age-old hills collapsed. His ways are eternal. I saw the tents of Kushan in distress, the dwellings of Midian in anguish. Were you angry with the, with the rivers, O Lord? Was your wrath against the streams? Did you rage against the sea when you rode with your horses and your victorious chariots? You uncovered your bow, you called for many, for many arrows. You, sp you split the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and writhed. Torrents of water swept by. The deep roared and lifted its waves on high. Sun, moon, sun and moon stood still in the heavens at the glint of your flying arrows, at the lightning of your flashing spear. In wrath you strode through the earth, and in anger you threshed the nations. You came out to deliver your people, to save your anointed one. You crushed the leader of the land of wickedness. You stripped him from head to foot. With his own spear, you pierced his head. When his warriors stormed out to scatter us, gloating as though about to devour the wretched who are in hiding, you trampled the sea with your horses, churning the great waters. I heard and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled. Yet I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on the heights for the director of music on my stringed instrument. And that is the word of the Lord. Allow me this time to invite our very own Reverend Irene. Thank you for the applause. You can hear it. Why don't we just pray for her? She takes us through. Let us pray. Our Lord and Savior Jesus, we thank you so much for the privilege of hearing from your word this morning. And it has pleased you to bring Reverend Irene forth and anoint her with power and might from on high. And I pray that she would be in your hands what this microphone is in mine to utter the utterances of God, to declare your oracles with power and might, and unto you accompany your words, Lord, with the transformative power that changes us and renews us in the image of Christ. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Karibu sana. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Koti, for leading us in that very powerful session uh, of prayer. And especially a day like this, uh, uh, when we are celebrating uh, the mothers, 
worldwide. I uh, want to thank you, each and every mother out there. We celebrate you and we thank God for that moment to be prayed for, especially by, uh, we could call him our son, uh, our child, or you can put him in any bracket. We want to thank God for that. Today, I want us to uh, briefly just go into the scriptures, Habakkuk chapter 3, 1 to 19. And I want to believe that the Lord will speak to you, uh, you as a mother watching us from, uh, from wherever place you are today, but to everyone because the word of God is relevant to everyone. And I pray that we will all draw uh, a message that the Lord is speaking to us, especially in this season that we are in. Uh, the theme or the topic for the sermon today is God will give you a song. God will give you a song. And, 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 and this is a promise by faith, and I hope that we will all take it by faith as we look at the prayer of a servant of God, Habakkuk, from chapter 1 to 19. Now, music has a place in our lives. I don't know how many of you loves mu love, love music. And uh, we, we love them in different genres. There are those who love hymns. There are those who love to dance and to sing contemporary music. And I don't know in what form, but I hope it's gospel music. Let me put a... <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it has a way of just carrying a message to us as it bears something that will transform our lives and change our lives. Music is a way of expression. We express ourselves. I've seen some of us who sometimes it's difficult to dance in church. When we go to weddings, we express ourselves as we dance because there is a way that music brings out a, that emotion that is inside us, that feeling, and we want to express that joy. And Habakkuk here says a prayer, and this prayer is a song, a song to the Lord after having conversations with him. And as we look at this prayer, there is, there is a rhythm that it follows, uh, uh, a method that it, is, uh, it, is, it, it follows as Habakkuk lays it down. Number one, it is on who God is and what he has done. That is number two. Number three, it is what he will do in the future. And then he concludes with praise and, 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 uh, and putting his faith out to him. And we see several people in the scripture who respond in music and dances. And the Bible has so many songs, including the whole book of Psalms, that are songs from the leaders of the past, including King Dan David. And we see the songs and the dance in the Bible, people just responding to the Lord. And I was so curious to know which, which one was the first song that was sung in the scripture. And the Bible tells us that in Exodus chapter 15 verse 1, after the Lord had delivered the children of Israel and parted the sea, the Red Sea, and they had crossed over, they broke into dance and song celebrating the goodness of the Lord. Hannah did the same, expressing her gratitude, her gratitude after the Lord has spoken to her in First Samuel chapter 2, verse 1 to 10. And we see Deborah also, the judge, dancing after the victory of the Hebrews over the Canaanites. And she dances in Judges chapter 5, verse 1 to 30, uh, in song. And we see also Mary, I am quoting the women today, probably because it is Mother's Day. Mother, uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, also the, 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 the song that she expressed expresses a profound appreciation of God's goodness uh, over her and the nations that uh, he was going to save in Luke chapter 146. Such songs come after the doing of the Lord in both action and in faith. Because sometimes it is the word of God that has come to you and when the Lord speaks to you, you dance rejoicing knowing that he is going to do something in your life. And Paul to the Corinthians tells them, I will sing with my, uh, with my spirit, but I will also sing with my mind. That is in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15. And Ephesians 5, 19 emphasizes on the importance of song when he says, 
speak to one another in psalms and songs and hymns uh, and songs of the, from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. And so there are those who love hymns. We thank God for you and we appreciate. There are those who want to sing songs from the Spirit and they just want to just go out in there and worship the Lord. But the end of this is that this music or this song comes from our hearts. It is not something that you sing because somebody is dragging you into doing it. But it is an expression of the inward feeling after the Lord has en after you have had, had an encounter with the Lord. I know you have tasted of the Lord and his goodness before. I know you have a testimony and you've heard your songs before. You have seen his works in your life. And in many times you have heard your own silent songs and own ways of dancing in your quietness when you have encountered the Lord. I have had personally a very rough two weeks. Uh, the first week I was very sick uh, and it was very difficult for me. Uh, but I saw the Lord fight for me a battle at a moment when I was very weak and he pulled me out of that bed when I couldn't eat or drink because I was feeling very bad. And this week, you know, we had a minor accident when we were coming back from Gong Road after going to do a recording for the sermons, uh, and we had a minor accident. But I call it minor because it could have been major or worse, but we saw the Lord fight for us. And as I stand here today, I have a two-week testimony and so many other things that the Lord has done. In this season of COVID, when we could probably we think we should be lamenting, but there are things that the Lord is doing in our lives and that causes us to break into a song of dance and rejoice and just say, Lord, how great are you? Oh God, how great are your works? Thank you, Jesus, for protecting me and for healing me. Something that causes your heart to go into a moment of song and dance. And so as we look at our cook prayer, let us step into uh, let us step into this scripture in faith and ask the Lord to make it very personal for me and for you watching us today. For you who is a mother watching us today, that from this scripture you will derive your own maternal song and rejoice today for what the Lord has done in your life. For you who is a father watching us today and a young person and a child watching us today, that out of this you will have your own song. And I want us to briefly look at three things. Number one, it is the sovereignty, God's sovereignty will give you a song. God's sovereignty will give you a song. Number two is God deeds will give you a song. God deeds will give you a song. And number three is our faith in God will give us a song. Our faith in God or faith in God will give you a song. Verse three, uh, chapter three, verse one to four is an introduction of this song. And we see Habakkuk acknowledging the sovereignty of God. And every time we talk about the sovereignty of God, we mean that he is the one who reigns supreme over you and your life, over this nation, over every circumstance and situation. He is the ultimate power. He is the one whom everything falls under him. Nothing but everything falls under him. Meaning that our God is a sovereign God and he is in charge of everything. And sometimes we know there are moments where we could pull back and rebel. But even in those moments of rebel, uh, when we focus on our own self and our own idols, and a little bit here and there we suffer, he still has the ability to end the things that we are going through. But he allows it sometimes for our own, for his own purpose and for his own good. May the Lord grant us the ability and the insight to grasp and understand that nothing is greater than, uh, than who he is. Abakuk, after the conversation back and forth with God, after asking the Lord about the, uh, to, to come and minister to them in the situation that they were in, the Lord responds in a way that Abakuk did not understand. He responds in a way that he did not expect. Because sometimes when we go to the Lord in prayer, we already have an answered prayer behind or what we want God to, God to do. But God responds in a way that was a bit mysterious for Habakkuk. And in verse 1, 
we see him coming into terms with who God is and his sovereignty. And he calls him Yahweh. He calls him, oh Lord. That is Yahweh acknowledging his sovereignty and allowing him to have his way. His conversation with God reminds him of the things that, the, that he had heard about God. Because he said, oh Lord, I have heard of your fame. I, have, I stand in awe of your deeds. You know, I have heard of the things that you've done. And I worship you. And I stand in awe. I appreciate your sovereignty. And we see him, as he appreciates uh, the sovereignty of God, revering him. And, you know, the fear of the Lord comes out in this scripture. Verse 2, I stand in awe of your deeds. And then we see him pleading for mercy. Because when you know what the Lord can do, when you acknowledge the sovereignty of God, and you know for sure that his wrath can, can, can befall you. And Habakkuk knew that very well. And even knowing that he was going to send the Babylonians to come and, and judge them in that season, he says, Lord, in verse 2b, in your wrath, remember mercy. He says, repeat your good deeds in our day, but in your wrath, remember mercy. And then he continues to share, you know, and I would encourage us to share your testimony of what the Lord has done for you. Uh, yesterday, someone shared a very powerful testimony of what the Lord had done to them. And I was encouraged to see what God has do had done to them and what he, ca he can do to me. And so because of that, Habakkuk in this time is able to re recall and remember the things that the Lord had done. And he says, you know, you came from Teman, that is the south. That is where they pointed, you know, your, your glory came from. And they, uh, uh, in that season, and they said, the Holy One from Mount of Paran, his glory covered the heavens and his praise filled the earth. When the Lord began to act, you cannot remain the same, my dear brothers and sisters. When the Lord begins to act on you and his deeds on, and, and have the, uh, his works on you, you cannot remain the same. When the glory of the Lord shines, it shines over the earth. And he says that his glory covered the heavens. And we rejoice, we respond, we respond in praise. And his splendor is like sunrise. It rays flashes from his hand where his power is hidden. And so I, sh I encourage us to share our testimonies of what the Lord has done to you. Because when you share, then we can begin to worship the Lord and acknowledge his sovereignty in our lives. The display of his glory is over the earth and the nations. And nations will acknowledge him. He will make himself known. Uh, he responded through the Babylonians. But in doing so, because later he destroys the Babylonian, he makes himself known. He, will, he has made himself known even in this season when we are going through the, uh, the pandemic of the COVID-19. The Lord has made himself known. And many nations, many nations, it might not be reported, but many nations are bowing down before the sovereignty of this God. He will get our attention in whatever way when we have rebelled from him. God is sovereign. And in his sovereignty, he has sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sin and with the ultimate goal that we may be saved. Knowing how great the, uh, the God we serve is gives us an opportunity to sing to him, give us an opportunity to stand before him in awe, give us an opportunity to go around Jericho dancing and singing, knowing that the, the walls of Jericho will come down. It gives us the strength to even dance in this season. It gives you, mother, a strength to dance over the situation and the circumstances that you are going through. That at the end of this, all those things will come down and we will raise in awe of who God is and we will worship him and we will acknowledge him and we will adore him in songs because he would have given you a song. Acknowledge his sovereignty in your life and sing along to the tunes that he unveils to you as he displays his glory over your life. God deeds will give you a song from verse 5 to 15. 
Remember, as I said earlier, that it is important that we share our testimonies of God doing with one another. Because in doing so, others are able to break into the song when they acknowledge what the Lord has done, not only in their life, but in the lives of other people. Ezekiah continued with a list of what the Lord has done uh, in the past. First, verse 5, he talks about the plagues and the pestilence. You know, he, uh, when he, he continued, verse 6, he talks about the judgment to the things that he created, that the mountain, the ancient mountains would grumble uh, and the hills will collapse. Verse 7, he talks about the victory over the Kushans and the Midians. Uh, verse 8, he talks about the Israelites' deliverance over the sea when the Lord broke the sea open for them to be able to cross. Verse 11, he talks about Joshua's victory. You know, when the sun and the moon stood still in the heavens and the, uh, the light at uh, the glint of your flying arrows and uh, uh, the lightning of your flashing spears and the Lord delivered them. Verse 13, he talks about the wicked nations being crushed. It could be the Egyptians of the, or the Canaanites, but those who were crushed for the Israelites to have their way. And we continue to see the works of the Lord. As, as, as Ezekiah, uh, uh, Habakkuk, sorry, continues to, to highlight of the Lord's doing. But let me pull you aside on this into a basket of self-reflection. And as we continue to look at God's doing, my question to you today is this. Does your work matter? As we look at the deeds of the Lord, does your deeds matter? Both public works, as I may refer to it today, and private works, the ones you do alone when you are in private. If someone was to write a song from what you have done, from what we have done, from our testimonies, if only God was to derive a song from our works as believers, will he, what will he say? Will he be able to confidently say that you have been my feet and my hands on earth? We are, we are all chosen people we bestowed with a purpose to glorify God and to honor him in what we do. And where we are fallen short of the glory of God, we ought to examine ourselves, repent, and return to God so that we may make room for him to begin to walk in us. Because the Lord sometimes wants to move, but we've hindered him because we have pulled ourselves away from him and just begin to do things that are not pleasing in his eyes. The longevity of our suffering sometimes depends on how long our hearts are hardened. For Pharaoh, it was a plague after another because the Lord desired to soften his heart and let his people go. Sometimes we hold on to our idols and selfish things and the Lord is asking us to let go. And we ought to let go and let God. But when the time, when the time of breakthrough comes and the sea is parted for us, then we will have our song and we will dance and rejoice. My dear brothers and sisters, the Lord is at work. In this season, the Lord is at work. You could be looking at your marriage and you're worried, but the Lord is at work. You could be looking at your children and you're worried, but the Lord is at work. And he will give you a song. And I want us to hold on to that faith. But as we hold on to the promise that the Lord is at work in our lives and that he has, he's going to break through for us, my prayer for you and me is that we will step aside and allow him and make room that he may come in and have his way in our life. Faith in God will give you a song. And that is from verse 16 and 19. Because of understanding the sovereignty of God and his deed, Habakkuk chooses to wait on God. He keeps his faith in God and his words and his, words and his promises for him. He now understands after the conversations back and forth that there comes a time when the Lord will accomplish his purpose. And he chose to patiently wait on the Lord. And he says, I heard and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound, uh, at the sound and decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled. Yet I will wait patiently 
on the day of calamity over the Babylonians. Punishment will come, and he knows this. That even as he prays for the children of Israel, the Lord says he's going to send the Babylonians and they will be taken into cap captivity. And he now understands this. And he expresses his reaction to this. And he says, my bones trampled. My bones trampled. My apologies. That's the technologies that we have today. And he says, my bones trample because of what the Lord is going to do. But yet he gathers his strength and he says, I will wait on the Lord patiently. I will wait on the Lord patiently. So different circumstances have different ways of pushing our faith. That it may have, that it, uh, it has different ways of having impact on our faith. But then immediately, what is our response to this? And the response that I would want you to, uh, to, to follow today is respond like that for Habakkuk, where he says that I will wait on the Lord. That in this season of COVID, we will wait on the Lord because the Lord wants to give you a song. And this is your season that is coming. And so it is for us to wait on the Lord. It might not be well, as verse 17 says, walk you might not be going to work or it is not as productive as you are. There could be no food, no vines, uh, no vineyards, no grapes in the vines. Or you could probably not afford the, the, the livelihood that you had. But yet, verse 18 encourages us that yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to thread on the heights. Praise be to God. Let the Lord and his sovereignty be over you. May the works of the Lord be upon you. Allow the Lord to fight your battles. And we will stand and sing in awe of him. We will trample in the presence of the Lord and the splendor of the Lord. And you will have a new song that you will sing to celebrate the victory that the Lord will have granted you. And so now, dear brothers and sisters, go forth and rejoice because the Lord will give you a new song. And so may the Lord speak to you and may the Lord encourage you and may the Lord strengthen you in this season as your song is on the way for you. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. And let the name of the Lord be praised. Dear listener, as we come to the close of this service, Happy Mother's Day. And we're so glad that you walked with us today. You have been talking to God in confusion. And you started with a sob with a tear like Habakkuk. But Habakkuk ends with a song. May you end in a song like Habakkuk that you draw this song from the glory of God and his, uh, his goodness. You draw it from God's deeds and his power. May your faith cause you to receive the song because we have a God who gives songs even in dark nights. Let me pray for you for a blessing if you can. Would you like to stand if you, if you are able or um, you just uh, lift up your hands wherever you are. I want to speak a blessing to you. Even as you sing a song, by faith, trusting in a God who is big. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, dear believer. May the Lord fight for you on Monday. May the Lord provide for you, my beloved, on Tuesday. May the, Lord, may the Lord carry you through on Wednesday. May he walk with you on Thursday. May the Lord, the powerful God, strengthen you on Friday. May he give you a song on Saturday. May he give you the grace to be with us again on Sunday. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of, um, of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord is giving you a song in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Say amen. Amen. It is well with you.